Yeah, with pass catching, it's a lot of uh, similar stuff. So definitely watch everything he's doing because I know he's an elite pass catcher. Um, adding him on our team obviously adds another threat, just another threat on our, on our uh, unit to be able to just go make plays. As he's, you know, he's made a ton of plays in his career. Say it, sorry, say it again. What, what, what are your biggest challenges as a blocker? What are you really out of work on? Uh, for me, uh, I'm probably giving up weight to you know every person I play against. So for me, it's about getting off of the, on the snap count and using my strength, which is my quickness and my leverage, being you know smaller than most of the guys I'm be blocking. So for me, it's just getting off the ball and using my explosiveness. Tony Dumas oftentimes does cut up for the running back when he goes down, just to show you guys in the league, other players. Has he done that with you guys and so who? Yeah, he's done that with a ton of players. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I watched Delaney Walker a lot. He did a lot of cut-ups with Delaney Walker, a lot of cut-ups of uh, Kelsey and Kittle, Mark Andrews. So I think mo mostly Delaney Walker so far. What do you take out of um, the guys, A lot of guys have different ways of winning. Not everybody wins the same. Everybody plays to their strengths and what works for them. So for me, it's just learning that I got to find out what works for me might not work for Kittle, Kelsey, Andrews, or Delaney. So. Have you gotten to speak to Delaney at all? I know he has some interest in, in meeting. Mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to him in a minute, but we we have spoken before, though. I just saw you guys to, to play in a preseason game maybe on Saturday and kind of cap off, cap off this week. Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll definitely be fun, you know, finally getting like a game week type situation and going there, you know, to uh, compete against other teams, other guys. So that'll definitely be fun to see different faces out there on Saturday. Get frustrated when the defense wins the plays when you're out here on the practice field, or you just kind of go back, watch the film, and, and try to learn from it. Uh, I mean, you, as a competitor, you're going to be frustrated on the field, obviously, but we know we just got to come back in, you know, watch what went wrong, and then you know, talk about it and then fix it. Do you remember what your first preseason game was like for rookie last year? Yeah, I do. Just being tired the whole time, just tired, tired out of my mind the whole game, playing all special teams, playing offense. Uh, yeah. We were up in Baltimore. Area. Yeah, I remember. I do remember. We were, I was just tired. You're planning from Rayhold because I know you mentioned like he's very vocal with the rookies in that first year. Yeah. In terms of like what mistakes you've made and kind of putting the other guy. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, definitely when uh, you make mistakes, you're definitely, it's definitely brought up and shown. So uh, yeah, it was tough. You expect you said you talked about you were tired. You expect these rookies to not know what's really going to hit them this first preseason. I feel like there's just no way to really, to really expect it. There's, you just have to go and feel it, and once you feel it, you're gonna be like, "Wow, it's different." So uh, there's, it's, you can't really prepare for it. It's just you just gotta do it. How do you prepare for it with a year under your belt? How do you prepare for it? Like, what are you going to do that? Uh, just execute, execute on our fundamentals. That's why I just want to go out there and make sure that we do, just execute on our, our bread and butter stuff on offense, things that we're gonna carry into the year. How is the training been different? Suppose the last year going through the draft circuit and all that, and then this year being able to ramp it up, you know, in preparation for the season. You're talking about training in the off season? Yes. Um, I did the same thing. I went down. I went back down to uh, Fort Lauderdale. You know, super hot down there. Um, got to run around in the sun a lot. Did some training. Did some speed training. Tight end training. Uh, I got like everything down there, and uh, I was pretty much just working like two times a day in the heat to get prepared. I would imagine that. Your percentage of reps, you know, it was 37% last year. It's going to go up this year. Can you do anything different conditioning-wise? Uh, conditioning-wise, no, nah, I just did what I did in my whole life, just run around in the hot sun. How's the schedule been as far as keeping guys fresh where you don't get the camp legs maybe at some point? Oh, uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. I mean, it's been good. We uh, go, like, twice a day, and then we'll have a – a jog through day to get our legs back, and then uh, we'll go back and we'll get back on it later in the week. And then at the end of the week, we'll have our off day on Sunday. So yeah, it's a pretty good time to get our legs back. Jake, how do you uh, grade yourself as a blocker now compared to say this time a year ago? Um, I say better, but it still needs still needs improving, as everything in my game does. Old. Yeah. I mean, is it hard to – have you gotten to know him, and can you see maybe a faster growth curve for him because everything is, is so new to him? Yeah, that's my boy, Thomas, uh, Strong, one of the strongest, if not strongest dude on the team. It's, kind of, it's actually kind of crazy, the stuff he does in the weight room. But, um, 
yeah, he's definitely improved a lot this year, especially um, blocking. Like it's it's been amazing to watch. You know, guy, he's kind of just locks guys out with his arms and stuff. He just keeps them there, so he's just really strong. Yeah, he got that roster exemption last year from the international player. How, how much did you see him grow in that year? Oh, a ton. You like seeing him now, from like from now to back then, like just way better. And that's obviously a testament to him. He won our off offseason player of the year award because he's uh, just put in so much work and so much so much grind. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch him play. You thought about maybe making a trip to the Netherlands to see him. Did you ever do that? And I'm gonna do it. We're doing it. Uh, this this off season yeah. coming up. Come There's on. no fullback on the roster per se. So mm -hmm. Brable said that the tight ends are picking up some of the plays where you'd have two two guys in the back. How how's that been? Kind of adding that to the play to your plate. I mean, last year I, I did a lot of fullback stuff, so for me it's just normal. So had you ever done anything like that at Maryland or anything? Yeah. Do you like it back there? Yeah, it's fun. It's easy. You just run and hit a hit a gap. Yeah, I'm at a weight right now. Um, I was actually a lot heavier in my past. I'm trying to get back to where I was, you know, back in college. And at that way, I, I still look the same as I do now. So uh, it doesn't really affect me in terms of running around. Where are you now? What do you want to be? Uh, it's like 245. That's good. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. you. Thank you, Chip. Thank you, guys. Big way for this offense. How has he grown, and do you think he'll be ready for uh, you know, to take that step? 100%. Uh, I just like his attitude. First and foremost, he's a very loose guy. Really, you know, has a lot of jokes in the locker room. But uh, obviously coming into that, that tight end number one role, I uh, just like the, the way he works every single day. Uh, obviously, we're going up against each other every single day, so I'm trying to make him better. And we're, you know, sitting on the side kind of talking about routes and different stems and different things that can help him uh, as far as when he's going up against other, you know, top safeties in the league. So uh, looking forward to a great year for him. Staying on tight ends, he was just talking about Thomas Odekoye and the way he's progressed, you know, from the international program last year to now. What have you seen there? Yeah, I mean, like you said, a guy that, that came in obviously probably didn't, you know, I wouldn't say know a ton of ball, but obviously he's learned a whole lot since, you know, he was on the practice squad last year. Honestly, this entire group of tight ends, uh, even the rookie, uh, I think he's doing a really good job of, you know, he's a guy that's tall. He has a lot of length down there. So I would expect him to be using the red zone a little bit. But um, I, I just like the group as a whole because they're, they're all so different. They all do a bunch of different things, including Wesco as well. So. Yeah, I, I'm a little biased. I think that you know we've been winning the majority of the days out here. Uh, obviously, the offense they're making plays and things like that. But uh, just like the way we're all looking as entire defense, obviously, you know our front four, you know every single day. And it's kind of hard during training camp to really tell because sometimes you know they're getting sacks, but obviously Braves is letting the play go along. But uh, and even the DBs, especially some of these young rookies, these young DBs, uh, Money Marsh, number 25, who I call him, he's been making a lot of plays, really showing up. So. Uh, just excited for us to keep growing and obviously get to our first preseason game on Saturday. What kind of impression is Anthony Kendall? Uh, like I said, I think that all of these guys, they're just coming out here just competing. And I think that's the main thing. Obviously, we still have a long way to go. Uh, it's going to be very telling when we get to this first preseason game how guys are going to react when it's really live out there. Uh, sometimes some of these rookies, uh, there are certain things you get to the first game, whether it's tagging a guy down on the ground or uh, we get to some two-minute situations. Uh, but they're all competing, and they're all hungry, and I think that's the great thing to see with any of the rookies. Kevin, can you talk about Armani Marsh? This is a guy that they, they signed in rookie camp, mm -hmm. Washington State kid. Looks like he's out there battling every single day. He's versatile, man. It's the first DB I've probably seen with a neck roll. I don't know if y'all peeped it. He got a little neck roll. Uh, so he throws his stuff in there when he's in the slot. So, But like I said, he's been making plays since day one. I actually – I think it was maybe in the second day I was just like, who's number 25? I, it's weird because I didn't really – you know, sometimes rookies, you don't really know their names. You just kind of know their numbers. It's like, who's 25? He's really impressing me. And he, you know, just kept showing up, kept showing up. So I'm excited to see him on Saturday. We see you and Imani over there doing side work with Coach Booker. The detail that he puts into it – how much goes into that, and, and how does that benefit you guys? That's an everyday thing for us. We do that from training camp all the way up until the playoffs, uh, you know, every day during the season. Obviously, they're doing special teams. We're on the side. We're doing our little footwork drills, just kind of tuning everything up. But 
there are things that I may bring the book or a money or sometimes book or have something for us. Rather if it's working on a middle field tackle drills, we're working on something that we probably uh, coverage that we're putting in that day. Um, but we're also in the meeting room during special teams meeting, watching film on. But if it's other top stages in the league, watching their man coverages, watching different things they're doing, and obviously uh, watching the tight ends we're going to play this year and watching quarterbacks. So, uh, so it's a lot of work that gets put in, a lot of detail. Uh, you know, me and him, we, we talk so much about the goals that we set this year, obviously for the defense, but for ourselves personally, uh, numbers and of turnovers that we want to get and things like that. So uh, we have high expectations for ourselves. That can seem like a couple minutes, but over the course of the season, that's some significant time, yeah? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it all adds up. Uh, you know, everybody used to saying just 1% every single day. So that, that's just the, the little inches we're trying to get every day. How has Bolden's transition to safety gone? Not only his depth, but he's a guy, I guess, that could play in a three safety look or a dime package. It's been really good. It's been really, really good. Um, Elijah is a guy who, during practice, will be at safety, be at a nickel, you know, some sub packages, linebacker. Uh, he's very, very smart. Uh, I tell him that all the time. He's very smart, very versatile. Uh, a guy who's obviously last year dealt with some injury stuff. So just, you know, the, the mental strain that he's had over this whole entire offseason to be able to get back to the position where he's at, to be the guy he's always been, uh, super proud and impressed with him. What's the challenge in that, Kevin, and being efficient in all those things that they're asking him to do? Yeah, I mean, some guys can handle it, some guys can't. And I think he's a guy who can handle it. Um, obviously, we're, there's always things we're trying to work to get better at, but he's a guy that's just impressed me a lot with just – I mean, he impressed me as a rookie how smart he was, but uh, just being able to come in and – there's in training camp, it's kind of different because during the season, the package is a little bit smaller. You're kind of game plan for, for one team, but training camp, our whole playbook is open. So he can be at three different positions, so he had to know every single thing. So he's impressed me so far. Looking forward to seeing Armani play you know, on Saturday. What's preseason games like for – you and maybe some of the veterans are probably not going to play, but you're going to get to watch guys who are working. I just, just try to be a coach. Uh, try to do as much as I can to give the guys something. Uh, if it's something that I'm seeing, as because obviously we're watching the film and, and the meetings, if it's something I'm seeing that can help them out, help them play faster. Because I remember when I was a rookie and I was out there and, you know, you're going out there the first drive or two drives and all the vets, you know, eating sunflower seeds with their hat on. But uh, you want to be that guy that's kind of engaged and, you know, making sure that you're just giving them everything that you're seeing on the sideline because uh, these guys are fighting for their livelihoods. Their guys are trying to make teams. Uh, so I'm going to try to do as much as I can to help them out. We talked to him last week. said you guys have played together so long. You kind of both always know what each other's doing. How much does that continue to develop over time and how great it is to have somebody next to you like that? Who yeah. That feeling? It's been great. You know, Monty's first two years, he was, you know, kind of coming in on third downs, sub package, because Kenny Vaccaro was me and him was start, starting. So we fi finally really got our first, you know, our first three years together. And uh, it, it's been impressive. Actually, this is going to be this is going to be our third year starting together. Um, but Monty, man, he, he impressed me since he was a rookie. Uh, he's a smart guy, very instinctual. Uh, you know, hopefully, obviously, he had some injuries last year. But, you know, me and him having a full season together, uh, I think it's going to be great this year. So, like I said, we're in meetings, always competing with each other, uh, setting goals and talking about different things we want to do. So, uh, love lined up against with Armani or lining up with him. Coach has said that he's had to pull you out at times because you're calling everything for everybody and he needs the young guys to figure it out for themselves. How hard is that for you to, to dial it in and, and let young guys figure it out? Yeah, at first, you know, this has been a couple of years he's been doing that. But at first, I really didn't like it like that. Um, but now I kind of just understand what he's trying to get accomplished. Uh, at the end of the day, we all have room to grow. And, you know, it's the same thing with Jeff. You know, Jeff's out there wrecking plays, and he kind of pulling back a little bit. So, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about trying to get everybody better because uh, I've learned the last two years, you're going to need everybody. You never know. You know, who's going to be out there, you know, right if it's nickel corner, safety, any position. Uh, so you want everybody to be able to get those reps and uh, be, have those coaching moments on the field. I'm that same idea, Kevin, with Elijah, then when he's back there, how is he in terms of being able to do all that and communicate to everybody? Yeah, I mean, he's still learning. Uh, he's still learning. But I think he's, like I said, he's been really good. And at times, man, this guy has a lot on his plate. Sometimes, you know, as a veteran, you kind of help him out a little bit. Uh, some things that he may not be thinking about at the time. I try to help him out as much as possible. But like I said, he's been great, man, learning all three positions that he's going to probably going to be playing. Um, so I look forward to him to keep getting better. Compartmentalizing the, the jobs. you have any kind of suggestions for how a guy might do that? Yeah, I mean, at first it's, everything's kind of moving a little fast, but I guess you're trying to slow the game down as much as possible, uh, watch more film. I mean, even being at the house, you know, I don't know if it's your wife or whatever, just kind of helping you walk through some different things. Uh, 
But at the end of the day, man, it's all about reps. The more more reps you get, the more comfortable you get, uh, the more the game slows down. You talked about being a, kind of a, being an extra coach or whatever, trying to impart things that you've learned to, to guys. Do you do that to the other side of the ball, even though you're trying to win the play? Sometimes you tell a receiver, hey, you, you might be better doing this, or tell a quarterback, hey, don't throw it there. You're being baited, that sort of thing? Yeah, at times. I'm, I mainly do it. When we get to the locker room, I don't really do it on the field because I don't want to give them anything that's going to beat me out there. But when we get in the locker room, we start to talk about different things like, hey, on this play, you know, this stem that you gave me on this ride really gave me some trouble here. Uh, so that would be really good. And I was talking to uh, Tony Deuce, who's obviously coaching the tight ends now, and was telling him about we're doing one-on-ones. And it was a route that Chig ran. I said, the reason why I didn't go for the little move you made is because, you know, you didn't give me enough shoulder or something like that. Uh, so, like you said, at the end of the day, maybe we're on the field. Sometimes you don't really have time because you're kind of locked in in practice. But once we get in the meeting room uh, or just if I see a guy in the locker room, like, hey, what were you doing on this play? And he'll tell me, like, hey, if you do this better, you might make me go left, and then, you know, you'll have a little bit more space. So, Because, uh, like I said, man, when you're a younger player, sometimes you don't really want to give people stuff because we know we're all getting evaluated. But I'm not, you know, I'm in a position where uh, it doesn't really matter because I just want everybody to get better because it's going to help the team. Kevin, Last one. the expectations uh, for the defense so far. Um, what are the like just about what this unit can accomplish? I think we can accomplish a lot. Um, I think just as a team, uh, I mean, right if it's just the defensive backs, obviously we have our goals, but just as a unit, I feel like we can be just as dominant as any other defense in the league. And I think that has to be the standard. The standard is always going to be the standard. Uh, you know, coach always say, like, he don't necessarily coach the results, but we coach the actions. And every single day, the actions is always try to be to the highest level. Obviously, we're not going to be perfect, but at the end of the day, when we marry um, – our front seven and our front four with that pass rush and that run defense with the things we're doing in the back end, we feel we could be as dominant as anybody. No, no problem. Thank you. Uh, just real quick here, I, uh, I told the team and you know everybody involved here at the organization, uh, but Terrell Williams will act as the head coach uh, for Chicago uh, starting on Friday. So I think this is a great opportunity uh, for him and for, for us and everybody involved. So. Uh, Big T will handle that. Clint will handle the, the defensive line. and um, So that will start on Friday. So you guys can handle that through Robbie um, and the communication when you talk to Big T and, and, and you know, kind of steer it towards that. And he'll talk to you after the game, and I'll come back on, on Sunday uh, and visit with you guys. So go ahead, Teresa. Hopefully uh, your absence isn't due to anything. Oh, no, I'll be here. No, no, no I'm, I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, Terrell, the, the opportunity and exposure uh, a, a, to acting as a head coach and helping that, I mean, and how valuable is that? Well, again, that, that'll be something that you'll have to ask him uh, afterwards, but I just think that him dealing and talking with the trainer and, 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 you know, again, we'll have a lot of conversations between now and, um, you know, Friday, but just handling things with the roster and, and discussing those things with the assistant coaches and, how, you know how we want to play the game, or letting them make those decisions in the game, and you know we'll go into the game with things that we think we need to try to get done, and I'm sure he'll try to do that, and I'll help him, you know where 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 need be. But I do think it'll be a great opportunity, um, you know, well deserved, um, and so this is something that I wanted to do. What will you do? Well, I mean, I'll obviously you know be involved and, and coach the guys on on technique and. You know, help T where I can, or you know, if there's you know a question or concern, but try to try to help him uh, understand that role and what's what's required. I know your hand was kind of forced when you guys had to do it with stretch a couple of years ago, but was that a beneficial experience to kind of inform this one? Uh, no, I think those two are separate. You know, I mean, I think those two are separate. Um, you know, wanted to be able to plan this out and, and talk to it and give. Give T ample opportunity uh, to to prepare, you know, for those meetings and, and his message and uh, the direction in which he he wants to take it. How long have you been thinking about doing this, Michael? Uh, there's some things that you know try to go through these things in the summer and you get away from it and try to think, you know, different things that you may want to do as it relates to training camp. How do you think you obviously know him well? And how do you think he'll do? Is it just something he's fired up about? Well, yeah, I mean, it would. Again, you'll have to ask him, you know, about some of those feelings and things like that. But um, I'm sure he'll do a great job. Again, those are great questions for those guys later on in the week. I just wanted to inform you guys so that you guys can.
can have an opportunity to discuss that. I, him as a coach? Oh, just his ability to, to reach every every player offensively, defensively. Um, you know, great experiences at different places. And, you know, you always see him talking to guys across the ball or O linemen or, you know, young, young players, veteran players. So, um, how, did this, how did this idea kind of come about? Because it doesn't seem like it's something that's been done a whole lot around the league. I, I came up with the idea, like most of the like most of the other things we do. You can see some of these undrafted guys like Tart, Naquan Jones, PV this year. How much has their progression into playing key roles for you? How much did that play? Into well, sir. Uh, well, no. I mean, just the ability to develop and teach players. And again, it wasn't about his ability to to coach Jeff Simmons or develop some of those guys. This is a this is an opportunity that was earned and, and deserved be, because of, you know, the vision that I think I have and, and his ability to reach, again, have conversations with with all different players and, and, and people in our organization from different positions and different backgrounds and so. What about the running back position? How have you seen some of the guys behind Henry start to show up? Well, you know, we'll see when the, the games come. I think that they're all – doing some good things and the special teams element is going to be huge and they're all trying to find a role and I think they're they're working hard at it they, you know protecting and trying to step in there you know I saw Jay Ward today you know defense kind of had an overload pressure and you know Jay Ward had to try to come back and save the day and stood in there on Nico and you know I don't know whether we'd have gotten it off or not but Ryan threw it to hop and and completed it you know on third down so again their their willingness to just react and play and you know, that, that's what you're looking for when, when the games start. Is it helpful for you guys when the officials are out and Trey Avery tugs on Josh Wiley in the end zone and it's pass interference and there's no flag? Does that help you get used to the regular season? Well, I think regardless of whatever is called or not called, I think just having them here is good operation for us, for them. They can meet with our players, and I'm sure they'll look at it. And whether they think it was after the fact or not, you know, we got to come back and we got to play the next play. And uh, so I think it's good. It's beneficial for everybody. I thought he was competitive. He popped him in there at guard and was able to, to go in there and, and, and operate and function and, you know, act like a pro. How's Chris Hubbard done since he's been here and kind of taken over, getting most of the reps with the ones? He's doing good. I mean, he's working hard and um, trying to progress and push through and, you know, Today was a good day for conditioning and there were plays where they moved the pile and plays where there was some good pockets and good protection and then other plays, you know, we'd like to have back. But, you know, just there was a lot of great situations that come up. We're down in the red zone and, you know, different looks that they coach through and, you know, just able to be able to say, hey, listen, if we get this on this particular play, like this is how we want to block it or, you know, just through the course of a lot of reps, there's just a lot of different little details that come up and, you know, that, that's why you practice. Exploring a little bit of a rough pitch as far as his versatility goes and maybe how, much, how many strides he made this offseason. Well, I thought he's you know really worked hard this offseason. He's gotten stronger and you know looks to, to be more durable in there and a little little thicker and stronger to be able to anchor and has played guard and, 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 and even working at some at center and you know different practices or walkthroughs and being able to play tackle. So you know we'll continue to look at him and these games will be critical for, for Andrew. Yeah, well, I'm glad you liked the, the day that he had, Toronto. I appreciate the evaluation. Um, I do think that he's gotten more comfortable just being here, and I think he's gotten in better playing shape. I think you can go and run and do sprints and everything, but it's a long day for an offensive lineman. It's a lot of individual, and uh, then you come over here and, and, and run some, some team reps and then two minutes. So I think the biggest thing has just been his conditioning and, and confidence to, to go out there and block these guys. and had, you know, that looks like he's improved each day. When you screen got a gold Malik twice and he doesn't get a playoff when the play clock's dwindling, what's what's the disconnect there? Um, I don't think there's a disconnect. I think it's why you practice. This is early on in two minute, and you know these situations are critical. So you know, we'll we'll make the corrections and we'll explain it to him and make sure that. You know, everybody's seen it through the same set of eyes and that we understand what the situation is and, you know, but 
you know, there's going to be some of that as we work our way through. And, you know, would we like every two minute drive to, to go down there and kick a 30 yarder? Sure, we would. But, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And you know, I think the more that you expose them to these situations that aren't scripted, th those are great opportunities to learn. And then if we don't you know, come back and get it the next time, then, then we'll have to you know, figure out why. But now it's, it's first exposure at that, that situation, and uh, I'm sure it'll be much better the next time. Kevin Byard said that Armani Marsh was somebody that has been impressing him and making plays from day one. That ring true for you as well? What have you uh, kind of seen out of Armani through camp? Uh, you know, playing nickel and quick and, you know, showing up. So, you know, again, we just ask, you know, ask our players to, to play and, you know, Rand and I will evaluate the positions and, and try to coach. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, okay. There was probably the, the most, you know, we went in the call it period again. I told you came in there on Julius and step up in there and has shown some versatility and, you know, probably we'll, we'll get some work at nickel eventually and making sure that he's still good there. And, but I do, you know, his, his ability to be out there, you know, we're dealing with some of the things that, that he dealt with last year from a health perspective. Um, I think he's continued to improve and get better. Is your plan for the quarterbacks Malik and Levis just in terms of Saturday's game kind of set or anything you can do they can do this week? Uh, that'd be a question for Big T. Are we going to have an opportunity to talk to him? Yes. Are we going to have an opportunity to talk to him before the game? Yeah, he's on Thursday. Thursday, he's on the schedule. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to take one of these from you. Can he take one of these from you? Saturday afternoon, he'll, he'll have you guys Saturday afternoon. He can take all of them if he wants. <laughs>